All right, greens, folks of YouTube. We have here a Filter Queen Majestic. Now they've put the word Majestic on a few different machines, and I had to, uh, I had to double check on this on their website actually. But this is the current version. Uh, so if you were to buy Queen door to door today, this is the machine they would sell you. Um, and doesn't look that much different than any other Filter Queen. If you're familiar with Filter Queen, they've been around since 1928. Um, so we're going to go ahead and service it. Um, the tool caddies as usual. Um, this is this has a different fitting than some of the previous older models that we're more familiar with. So we're just going to set those down there for now. Um, everything else is pretty similar. Um, make sure we have a cone in here. Yeah cone in there. So we've got things like a, a wood brush roller, but there's a lifetime belt. Still no height adjustment. We have a one-piece non-telescoping wand. We kind of have this finicky handle, similar to what we saw on like a Water Magic or something. I'm sure it's like a Filtex product or something like that. So it's two-speed. <laughs> seems to be working well except it's a little loud and the previous generation before this I have experienced in the past year five or six that have come in with just bad motors so there's maybe some sort of either problem they had or just an indication that quality has gone down a little bit um, it sure is kind of an awkward looking vacuum and kind of an old looking vacuum uh, for 2017 or 2016 um, let's see if I can figure out when it's made. Um, so yeah, they used to have like this little metal screw-on cap here. There's just a piece stapled, which is adequate, but just a little bit different. They are still made in the U.S. This is an M360. Um, serial number is M251. It's what it starts with. Doesn't really tell me much. Uh, so I'll look. I'll look for a date stamp in the plastic somewhere. Uh, and we will confirm when it was made. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the usual uh, Filter Queen service. First thing I always do is I replace the batting. Um, it's not really meant, it's meant more as a muffler than a filter, but it still gets stuff in it and odors and dirt on um, really old Filter Queen, so I just go ahead and I replace it always. Um, what's interesting about Filter Queen is uh, the serial numbers are always on these little tiny plates. And I guess if you wanted to be an a, a full royal asshole, you could mix up somebody's machine or potentially switch somebody's machine on them. But I, yeah, it wouldn't benefit any place I've worked for, but I suppose somebody could. So, one thing's a little different about the newer Filter Queens is the two-speed motor on the older Filter Queens was done in the motor much like the compact Tri-Stars and there was just like an actual physical dip switch that controlled it. This has a some sort of triac board in here with um, to give you a better idea how many wires are going into that um, quite a bit of wires um, so we are going to just quickly pull the batting out Um, so just to show what gets caught in the batting, this one's not too bad. Again, this is a fairly new machine, so I'm gonna, I am gonna replace it. Um, I actually had it brought over from a different store because we don't see enough filter queens at this store to justify stocking the batting. Um, that might change now. I might have to, I might start stocking one. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. We're just going to wipe down the inside of this real quick. Uh, sorry, the camera's not really focused on what I'm doing. Oh, my tripod's moving. Right. So we can go ahead and just put the batting in. Um, 
with that loud motor, I, I, there's not much I can do about that. Um, filter cleans are pretty simple, so I am just going to pop it open and just inspect the motor, see if carbon brushes are settled right and all that. Um, there's not a lot to these machines, which is kind of why I guess the appeal of them still is that they are very, very basic. Um, but they're also very, very expensive for what they are. You know, this is not a $500 or a $1,000 machine. This is probably two or a $3,000 machine. Um, and granted, it's made in the U.S., so, you know, they can definitely justify the price a little bit there, considering how expensive it is to make things in this country still. Um, it's actually cheaper to have them made in, like, some place like Germany, uh, and import them than it is to make them in the U.S. at this point. So, these are much shorter than the older ones would have had a, a nut on the other side, would have actually had to get a wrench out to do this. So the newer ones don't. This plastic top, even though it looks the same, is a different part. It's got little brass inserts. So we're going to take a look at the motor. Motor doesn't look like anything special. Uh, it's a lot smaller. Looks to be... I'm looking for a make on the motor right now. It used to be Amtec Land Motors, but I believe this to be a Johnston motor looking at this. Or even worse, it could be some sort of... something from... Uh, it is a land motor. I just saw the land marking. Uh, it's an incredibly cheap lamp motor then. Uh, reminds me of like a recar simplicity motor or some sort of Panasonic. <laughs> I'm looking for a date stamp if you guys are wondering what I'm doing. So 2014 is what's stamped on the motor. Uh, 42114. Uh, that's, that is our answer to the age of the machine. Um, though it looks just like the picture of the one they're selling on their website, so it, it, presumably there are no changes. I will say that the armature is kind of dirty for the age of the machine. Um, leads me to wonder if the carbon brush is settled right, uh, when it came from the factory. So I am going to just quickly pull one brush just for inspection. Because of the sound this motor made, um, the age of the machine, normally I wouldn't check brushes on a machine this new, but given the circumstances and so I've got the brush part. I don't know if you can see, but there is some uneven carbon brush settlement right there. Um, so I think I will uh, attempt to resettle the carbon brushes for this owner. There's plenty of life. Um, which is going to be kind of a fun thing. I, I was talking to another technician who just doesn't resettle carbon brushes ever. Um, and it, it's kinda, he's got a, a good point that this really does, shouldn't need to be done ever in the motor's life. Um, so we're just going to reset it, see. See if we can improve something for the customer. You know, I'm putting these screws back by hand because they are going into this resin uh, glass filled plastic stuff that doesn't really like it if you fuck around with it too much. Um, I'm going to put my dust mask on at this point, even though it's called a filter queen, these don't filter particularly well, especially uh, when you have the motor half exposed like this. Of course. Alright, now that we've dealt with the line of customers, I have my carbon brush settlers out.
as always, don't try this at home, don't do this at home, bring this to some sort of service center that might know what they're doing. We have resettled the carbon brushes. And actually, it did sound a little bit better when I was doing that. We will see. Yeah. I'm using my lowest torque setting. I'm going to manually torque. Again, they use those little brass grommets which have a tendency of stripping. So we manually torque all those. We're just gonna wipe down the inside of this. So I got it all dirty when I settled those carbon brushes. I also put the circuit board back where it needs to be. Again, also using a real screwdriver for this not want to hurt this board it is quite expensive as are all the parts for this the filter queen has really stopped making a lot of parts available to us uh, vacuum infinite vacuum dealers uh, so they're kind of going the way of I don't think they think they're going this way they're really making themselves out to be more like a I hate to say it like a shark uh, by not having parts available and wanting to go through dealers or more like areas I guess I don't think Filter Queen though makes enough machines that they should be making parts scarce. I'd be willing to bet that they make a lot of money selling parts to independent dealers. If they were tired of the customers, I guess where they were losing money was not selling parts probably, but selling. If somebody brings us in here and they see a brand new Mila or Sibo or hell, even a Simplicity Canister, which I speak so highly of. Um, and they just get blown away by it being more compact and more maneuverable and better in a lot of ways. And I guess the practicality of it. So we have changed the batting. Again, I always do these top screwdrivers with a manual screwdriver, which is something. So now we're going to open this up and see that there is a Non-genuine filter queen coming in there. Which is okay on older filter queens, but that one was just of 
less quality. <laughs> Would not run that in the vacuum. So we're gonna clean this up as best we can. And then I will have to find the rest of the filter. The one thing I don't like doing is I don't like washing these. The reason I don't like washing these is if you look in here, I'll clean them out. If you look at this, this is riveted to this. And dirt will build up in between this and I always try and clean it out the best I can. But if you wash it, water gets in there and some dirt you just can't get out. It'll start to smell bad. Um, so generally a wipe down is what I personally do. If it is bad, I will wash it, but generally just a quick wipe down is all that's needed for odor control and for cleanliness. Just a... Now there's some cur what we call curb cake in here. You can see that stuff. And that I will scrape out with the screwdriver. I love this. Use only genuine filter queen cones. That is a that is the biggest genuine notice I've ever seen a manufacturer do. Yeah, that's just scraped right clean. thing I will always do is this big thick gasket around here. It is always going to get a lot of polish from me. And the reason being for the polish is it helps uh, protect this rubber seal. I don't believe this one to be natural like the old ones. But the old ones it was super important to do. Just to revitalize the seal. So now we get to see if we have filter clean cones. I used to use filter queens as my bench vac for years. Uh, in fact, there's even a modification you can do to make this into a central vac. Even though filter queens did make central vacs, you actually get a there's a diameter bucket you can get basically making to this up. So we have this, and sometimes I will wash this. And then we have this filter, which always goes neglected. Okay. And what I will always do, yep, we're always gonna really wipe this down with Windex, get the dust out of here. So now I've actually cleaned both sides with a rag. Uh, I cleaned the inside as well when I had the motor part was changing the battening. So that's kind of cool is how fast you can service these and relatively easy. I'm looking for filter queen cones. I don't, uh, long story, but I kind of took over for another guy at the store who has now moved elsewhere in the company. Just found these. It's the original compact uh, bags. They're quite old. They're like paper translucent. They are interesting find, but they're not the filter queen cones that I'm looking for. I know this seems funny, but I suspect that he's never serviced a filter queen uh, when he was in the store, and we don't have any out. 
See, normally we have bags for every kind of vacuum out on the bench. Um, yeah, that's what's under this bench right now. Um, so I must go to the front and find some. All right, well, I cannot find the genuine filter clean cones that I usually keep around. So we are gonna use a replacement, but a much higher quality replacement than what was in here. Um, there's also another filter this machine's supposed to have. Uh, so I'm gonna have to order that. So. so this is a replacement from back in the day. It's really thin. I don't know if you can tell. It's so much thicker. This is almost identical to spec. Uh, what Filter Queen would have used. Um, it's actually a cellulose uh, material. So as you guys know, I'm real big into using genuine or stuff that is of the exact same caliber replacement. And I would say that this is a better filter than what this filter is better than what OEM would have come with. So now that I've had to do that, So the thing about putting this filter in is it's not exact, it's not a sealed system. Uh, basically, I tuck a little bit of this up and this whole this ring is just... And you have to kind of crease it a little bit otherwise you can bend the filter one way or another when you're putting it on this ring. See that's nice and tight makes a good seal around it now but it or sometimes like I say you can get distorted I'll wipe down the uh, filter cover okay. and there's a gasket here so of course that's gonna get a little bit love love for me filters. Now the newer ones have this nice thumb screw. The old ones have like a straight, uh, some of them were Phillips but a lot of them were a flathead and you had to just always felt like forever uh, when you were screwing this down. And that doesn't need to be super tight. So again there's supposed to be a cellulose, and not just the cellulose filter supposed to be in here, there's like a like extra like charcoal filter thing that's supposed to be here on these newer models. This one doesn't have it with it. Um, I'm not sure it should be run without it. So I'm going to look into ordering it for the customer before the customer gets the rest of this back. Um, so now that we've Changed all that. We'll wipe down the outside here in a minute. We are going to open the power head, which I have a video on, I think, already. But you guys can watch it again. Always please like and subscribe. Or don't. Set the camera now. We're working down here. It just comes right apart like a champ. So as you can see, it's very, very simple in here. So I was stating the other day, this is about how simple a power head needs to be. Some sort of way to shut the motor off. It's got a lifetime belt, brush roller, and a motor. We don't need all sorts of fancy electronics in here. This mechanism is always kind of locks in there and then kind of a strange mechanism. So 
So again, it's, it's fairly new. It's not too too dirty, but it's every vacuum gets the same treatment. So we'll wash the pipes, and I will be back. Okay, we've washed this. It's important to know that these end caps are eccentric with a screw. Um, we're going to clean this out real quick because that's pretty bad. Looks like it got wet in there at some point. Let's go over and scrape the shit out of this. get this nice and clean for the customer. All right. So we're going to put this on here. Make sure those, that brush filler is lined up properly place. And both screws have become unmagnetized with my drill. Bumper just comes off so easily in this. It's like the third time I've resettled it. Yep. Again, there's not much that holds this on. It. Quiet felt down. The complaint was that it was loud, but I don't really see anything other than those carbon brushes. They're kind of rough and unsettled. Don't really cause it to be loud, but like I said earlier, it's, it's possible the motor could be going out already. So the cover goes back on. See that there's not much to this vacuum uh, in terms of the brush. This doesn't even like swivel fully. Yeah, I think part of the reasons why they don't want independent dealers having parts is people can compare this to any other power head. Well, maybe a Kenmore isn't quite as nice as, as this, but anything that would be in a vacuum shop would be probably much nicer than this. And less money. Real low torque setting and all this stuff. Yeah. All right. 
We have this pretty much serviced up. Lubed up the wheels with some of my favorite lubricant, Tri-Flow. So we're just going to clean the rest of this up. Get the paint marks off. It. In terms of servicing these, as I said, I'm going to have to order the extra cone filter for the customer. If they want it, they might be purposely running it without it. That's always something that happens. Just get that corner nice and good. Back polish. That gets pretty beat up as well, it looks like. This is a wand. Uh, it's kind of expensive to replace, and I've had to replace it a few times for customers over the past couple of years. Um, say it's one of the more common things people want to come to us for. Again our parts have gotten kind of scarce now. Just quickly take care of the rest of the unit. marks off here for the customer. I think it's really important both inside and out the machine to be clean for the customer. Um, I've seen companies that just do the outside, I've had companies that just do the inside. It's important to do both. I wonder if they consulted Xbox, uh, the Microsoft team. Uh, they were talking about naming this the 360. I think there's also an Office 360. It's a Microsoft product. It's kind of a strange name. It's not 365, it's just 360, like spinning it 360 degrees. Which is never really what you do when you do a service on one of these. It's got some nice, uh, nice swirls on the sticker here. Again, it doesn't, doesn't really look like it's a couple thousand dollar vacuum. There's nothing to give that away. Got tool kit I need to clean off. I suppose I could wash these tools. Tool caddy. Over the years they've been using basically the same tool caddy and these crack and get broken. This one feels a little bit more solid but usually they have a little bit more flex but this, this will always break off this crevice tool holder. <laughs> Not so much because of the material, but just the design, it's going to catch on furniture and stuff. And these canisters are the reason that some people have an aversion to a canister vacuum versus an upright. It is quite bulky and unwieldy. Another interesting thing is there's a place for the cord to get clipped on. I do, however, like the newer versions have a little strain relief here. The older ones did not. And it doesn't make up for 
putting a motor that's kind of subpar in a machine of this quality. Again, that cord just clips on this thing. We're going to plug it in. We're just going to listen to it now. We'll also test it real quick with a particle counter. Just to clarify, almost a million particulate in the air. We're going to see if a filter queen is worthy of the name filter. say no. <laughs> it does not filter very well. It does have a lot of power though. But that wind down is consistent. And that, maybe that's why the motors are going on these people aren't using the, the filters properly. It's interesting as there's a logo stuck on the crevice tool which has a gasket on it. Awesome. Yeah. These are all pretty dirty. We're going to wash these. Uh, but other than that, we're done. So as always, please like, subscribe, um, and comment below to performance reviews.